Coming up on this edition of the news feed, residents soon won't have to drive the recyclables to different locations because curbside recycling is coming to Christiansburg. Plus, efforts to decrease smoking on campus are underway in the Student Government Association. And how the university is trying to deal with parking difficulties on campus by providing means for alternative transportation. Those stories and more just ahead. Um, roll A, take A. Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of the News Feed. I'm Brooke Leonard. Data mining is becoming a more prominent issue as social media becomes more integrated into normal day life. The major social media platform Facebook has gone under fire with accidentally providing user data to third party apps for research without consent. Many believe that selling off their personal information is a direct invasion of their privacy and raises questions on what should be posted on the web from now on. News Feed reporter Ricky Lamb has more on this story. It was just a normal day logging into Facebook until 87 million people realized that their information may have been compromised for a political research firm. On April 9th, Facebook has been rolling out notifications informing users that their personal data may have been exposed to a data mining firm called Cambridge Analytica. Data mining has been a common issue since the social media existed, with many believing that it is a direct invasion of their privacy and how it could influence what content they see on their newsfeed. There comes a responsibility with that kind of data, and especially in a world that um, our, like our life evolves around social media. So, I mean, for them, it's a huge mistake on their fault because they needed to be protecting the data a little bit better. Um, and then that comes in play with ethics in general. Even Facebook's algorithm shapes a user's newsfeed based on what he or she likes. While data mining I'm continues on. to be a recurring issue in the digital age, there are ways to prevent information from yeah. being passed on to third-party mm -hmm. apps. Now, they do give people some measure of privacy, and I think increasingly people are starting to realize that you can limit who sees the content you post on Facebook. You can use friend lists or use different privacy features. You can create secret groups for sharing information and whatnot. So it isn't such that all of your data will be blasted out to everybody that you're friends with, but it is part of their, their, um, their business model. While executives believe that users chose to share their info, more revealing information about this scandal has raised questions for users and society as a whole. Reporting for the newsfeed, this is Ricky Lamb. Helping the environment is about to get a whole lot easier in the New River Valley area. In the upcoming months, Christiansburg residents will have access for the first time to curbside recycling. Reporter Alexis Bignati has more on this story. Christiansburg announces plans to launch a curbside recycling program starting this summer. With the new program, residents will see their bill increase by $5. The trash fee will go from $17 to $22 a month. I know my son lives here and he's recycled ever since he's been married 13 years and he puts it in bins and carries it to where the recycle places are and drops it off. So I think it's a good thing, less litter in our landfills. Two different sized recycling carts will be offered with no additional charge. Residents will have the choice of choosing between a 65 gallon recycling cart or a 96 gallon cart. The new program will be a single stream service. This means that the recycled items, such as glass bottles, newspapers, plastic jugs, and food containers can be collected together. I think it's important because of the convenience that it will be giving to the community and encouraging them to recycle as opposed to throwing everything right in the trash. Currently, the residents of Christiansburg have five different drop-off sites, including Home Depot, where they can take their recycled items free of charge. However, these sites may be taken out of commission in the near future. The program plans to begin on July 1, 2018. In Christiansburg, this is Alexis McNaughty reporting for the newsfeed. The Virginia Tech Student Government Association is working hard to decrease smoking and tobacco use on campus. Newsfeed reporter Brendan Quinn has more. The Virginia Tech Student Government is pursuing an initiative to establish the university as a smoke-free campus. This will take a lot of work, but they believe they can affect change even in an area with high rates of tobacco use. Virginia was a huge tobacco state. North Carolina is a huge tobacco state. It's a pretty big thing in the South, and we're right, you know, there in the middle of it. So it's pretty, um, 
we're shaking up the system by trying it, and uh, next year it'll be it'll be a lot of work and uh, kind of pushing and trial and error. The student government is seeking to draft a policy establishing Virginia Tech as a smoke-free campus, but the process takes time and commitment, and it must pass university approval. And it would not be this year because the policy would have to be written and then has to go through all the levels of the university. But um, I know next year they're going to keep up these tobacco-free meetings or tobacco and smoke-free and keep talking. And then it'll probably be next year when something is drafted and introduced. The student government has worked closely with Hokie Wellness to address the issue of college smoking. One key area that they target is the rise of vaping, which studies show leads to the development of nicotine addiction. The problem is that it is promoting nicotine addiction in those students. So most students that are in college are not quitting tobacco. This is the time that they're starting tobacco. Hokie Wellness and the Virginia Tech student government are working together to establish a smoke-free campus. They believe that will lead to a healthier generation of Hokies. Reporting for the News Feed, I'm Brendan Quinn. Tessa ahead on the news feed, how the university is incentivizing students to visit the new baseball stadium, and how the pharmacy garden deals with the unpredictable Blacksburg weather fluctuations. That story and more after this break. make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Butcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to the News Feed. I'm Brooke Leonard, joined here with News Feed reporter Andy Brannon. English Field at Union Park has officially opened its doors to fans for the 2018 season. After a less than ideal turnout and a soft opening, those in charge of ticket sales are putting the new stadium features on full display. Andy joins us more with the story. Thanks, Brooke. April 14th is the official grand opening of English Field at Union Park after three months of delays. Spring is in the air and that means that college baseball season is in full swing. For the Virginia Tech Hokies, that means they'll finally take the field at the newly renovated English Field at Union Park. In a three-game series played against NC State two weeks ago, fans were treated to a soft opening of the ballpark, which did not draw the crowds people had hoped for. Ahead of this weekend's grand opening, the new stadium's amenities are on full display in an attempt to attract crowds. Senior student and fan Molly Zonikoff spoke about some of those amenities. Seats that are um, suite options, so for quite a little pricey amount you can sit up top and there's a full bar and food options um, with indoor and outdoor seating. Doors open for the grand opening at 6 p.m. for an under the lights kind of night against Louisville. I'm Andy Brandon reporting for the news feed. Back to you, Brooke. Sounds good. Thanks, Andy. To combat the lack of parking on campus, some students and faculty take the streets on two wheels for their commute to campus. The Alternative Transportation Hub is located at the bottom of the Perry Street Garage and offers a variety of tools and assistance for those who use and want to learn more about alternative means of transportation. For the upcoming year, new changes are expected for this center. Newsfeed reporter Caroline Fear has more. As more students commute to campus, less and less parking spaces become available, leading many to take to the streets by bus, bike, or walking. The Alternative Transportation Center at Virginia Tech is located on the first floor of the Perry Street Parking Garage. This center also holds home to the Hokie Bike Hub, where faculty and students can come to self-service their bike or receive help from an expert Bike Hub team member. 
Contrary to popular belief, this hub does not receive funds from the university, but instead from fleet and parking services. When speaking with Chitty Raju, alternative transportation specialist, as the university continues to grow, a transportation center is expected to break ground in the spring, bringing new changes to the bike hub. There's going to be a building in front of this garage that we're going to share with BT Transit. So we'll still have, hopefully, like a big open shop space as a bike hub and also offices for alternative transportation employees. And then this parking lot over here is going to become a central bus hub. Bikers in the area, like Jackie Wilson, think this new program will have a positive effect on campus. I think it's really good for the future of Virginia Tech. I know that they have a lot of problems with parking on campus, and I know that this is definitely not really going to help that, but it's going to help incentivize people to take buses and ride their bikes and walk to campus more. They're excited for the new transportation hub to take ground in late May and are ready to expand their services so more can use this alternative means of transportation. Reporting from the news feed, I'm Caroline Fear. Now back to you at the news desk. April showers brings May flowers is true for most parts of Virginia, but the New River Valley has had two snow showers in April alone including below freezing temperatures for most of March. The mild weather has set back many gardeners and farmers, including the pharmacy garden, which depends on its produce growth. The pharmacy garden in Christiansburg, located at the Health and Human Services building, is one of many gardens in the New River Valley that is struggling with the inconsistent weather. The snow in the last two weeks has pushed back planting for the pharmacy garden, but Olivia Obertello says it could be worse. The pharmacy garden is free for people to come and um, volunteer at and take produce home, but for the farmers who are growing food to sell and that's how they make their living, um, it really affects you know, how much they can make. Most of the garden's plants are being started in a greenhouse or underneath netting in hopes that they will continue to stay alive until summer. With the cherry blossoms blooming, there is growth in sight. And the pharmacy garden will open in May and offers free produce to low-income families that come and help out. That will wrap up this edition of the News Feed. If you have a story idea for the News Feed, let us know. Send us an email at thenewsfeednrv at gmail.com. And as always, you can also connect with the News Feed on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Brooke Leonard. Have a good day.